This is a Socialist News and Views special interview. I'm Nick Schillingford coming to you from the Urban Cabin Studios in South Minneapolis with this special interview. So on Socialist News and Views, we let folks introduce themselves. Do you want to just let people know who you are? I'll just say I'm Tracy. I usually, because I never know what to say about myself. I'm like, um. Uh... No, that's very fair. I think, you know, I just like to leave it up to people because sometimes people like to accentuate one part of whatever they're doing or they like to focus on something else. And so I like to just give them, sometimes you rattle off everything everybody's done and then you're like, wait, what are they, what are they, what are they doing? Um, but I wanted to talk to you specifically. So this is kind of where, uh, where it comes in. We just had the anniversary of your podcast. Uh, congr <laughs> congratulations, 47th president, Dr. Cornell West. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about that podcast when you started it, why you started it and a little bit about it quick? Um, wow. That's a good question. So I started the podcast the third Saturday in September. Okay. Of 2023. So it was a little bit after Dr. West had announced his candidacy for the president of the United States. Um, once he said he was running, I already knew I was going to do a podcast. I nice. just knew. It. I don't nice. know what made me think, oh, people want to see your face. But I'm like, well, you're going to have to put up with it anyway, because you're going to see my face. <laughs> right. I, I knew I wanted to do a podcast. And then kind of like after that, I knew, especially after that first episode, I probably want to talk to other supporters of Dr. West. Right. Um, and so it's been a year and I can't even fathom where that time went because I, you know, I started off talking about how excited I was about the campaign and I'm still excited about the campaign, but I was so hopeful and so joyful. And like, now I have a candidate that I can vote for with a clear conscience and everybody should know about Dr. West. Right. Yeah, you've had some pretty cool guests. I was on there uh, not too long ago, uh, repping Minnesota for Cornell West. And uh, yeah, you've had some really neat uh, uh, people on there from different places where they're supporting Cornell West talking about, you know, how they come at um, the issue. And we just had the National House Party, the Cornell West National House Party. I know you just yeah. did a recap of that on your channel a few days ago. Unfortunately, I was at a conference during the National House Party, so I, I would have tried to get something together up here, but I just didn't have the ability to do it uh, from because I was down in uh, Chicago uh, for Socialism 2024. Do you want to just give a recap? It sounds like it went really well. I have, although I haven't. Had um. Yes. So to start off with, the National House Party was not supposed to be a National House Party. <laughs> right. It was just going to be for Indiana. Right. Literally, that's the only state I had in mind. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then my mind does what it does. I start thinking, oh, this sounds like a good idea. Why don't we just invite other states to have house parties? Yeah. But sometimes, you know, I have to stop myself sometimes <laughs> when I think of these things because it sounds like a simple idea. We'll just get other states. But no, I had to create handbooks, which I've never done. Yep. Um, I had to coordinate with all kinds of people that had questions. Yep. Um, it went extremely well. Um, there were house parties in Arizona, California, Washington, Florida, Virginia. It, nice. it went way better than I thought. And I'm especially proud that Indiana was the only state that had both in-person and virtual. So nice. We did both. Yeah, we did both. And a lot of people like you that couldn't make it, they kind of jumped on ours. Oh, and nice. We, what, 47 people show up? Nice. And I'll make donations. But you That's can throw a house party anytime. You don't have to wait for us to tell you. You could just, the hand booklet's there. Yep. You just throw it and you go forward. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you have uh, the big ideas and you put that out there and then uh, it, it happens. It You know, 
it comes together. And uh, yeah, it's great to, you know, we can encourage other people because there's people all over the country that are interested in getting involved with Cornell West, even here in Minnesota. Um, you know, I was working on the campaign for Cornell West here in Minnesota. Um, there was people in further parts of Minnesota that was difficult for me to get to very regularly, um, you know, but they could do their own thing. They could reach out to me uh, with some of the stuff they were doing. So that was really neat. Um, and I just got a letter from our secretary of state here in Minnesota uh, saying that Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Melina Abdallah will, uh, for the Justice for All Party, will be on the ballot here in Minnesota. Um, so uh as far as i know you know that should be the final word uh, we got considerably more um uh signatures than were required to uh, get cornell west on the ballot here uh, but we still didn't get anywhere near the number that you guys needed uh in indiana um which is to me is like a very high number um can you just talk briefly about what was required for the ballot in indiana and then just about the write-in campaign that uh um, west is running now and how people can get involved yeah, Indiana makes me sick. Let me just say that. I've lived in this state all but two years of my entire life. I was born in Indianapolis. I live in Indianapolis. Our state has probably one of the hardest signature ballot gathering requirements in the country. Um, we were mm -hmm. expected to gather the exact number is 37,363 signatures. No, 337,393 signatures. Because what they do is they take 2% of whatever the Secretary of State got and say you got to get 2% of that. You would think that as a Republican leaning state, it would be way easy to get signatures. It is, to all the states that have gotten right. Dr. West on the ballot, congratulations to you all, because we could not figure out how to do it. I mean, we did everything we could. We went to parades. We went to parties. We went to comedy clubs. We did everything we could, and we fell way short of that number. Um, but we kind of knew that going in. Indiana is a very hard state, and without, you know, J I was about to say JFK. That's wrong. RFK. Right. He got on the ballot because he had people, he paid people to gather signatures. Right. And that's the one thing that I wish this campaign would have done. But mm -hmm. of course, you have to have money to do that. It's a money. We, it's all a money have, game. Yeah. If you don't have the money to do that, then you're like solely. Right. And whatever money, and whatever money you do have, you got to put, you know, like very strategically because again, it's like, you don't have that much money. <laughs> we're right. not the money people. We're the people people. So we got to work on our. You would think with Russia paying West that he would have. more. Uh, I know, I mean, right? That's what they say. Russia, like, the Republicans are all behind it, right? The Republicans are financing this campaign. Show I know, the right? Legal part, and then we can talk. Right. Once you do that. But anyway, um, we kind of knew ahead of time, yeah, we're probably not going to make it. So we just started saying right in campaign. Now right. we're in a kind of unfortunate situation where we started off with 20 volunteers and basically we're down to two. Mm. So we haven't launched our write-in campaign because we don't have right. enough volunteers right. to launch a write-in campaign. Yeah. So Dr. West isn't going to get 2% in Indiana, which would put him on the ballot for the next time. Because right. if he has 2% write-in in this campaign, then if somebody ran for justice for all, they wouldn't have to go gather signatures. Which would be nice. <laughs> would be nice, but with two volunteers, yeah. it's very hard to reach 6 million people with two volunteers. No, it's true. And I mean, it's, you know, you, there was a lot of pressure put on those volunteers, you know, and trying to, you know, get all these signatures, get them on the, you know, on the actual ballot. And then when you fall short of that, it feels very, it can feel very discouraging, uh, you know, for some folks. So, um, so, is there some way if people did want to volunteer in Indiana or get involved, how, how what's the best way for them? To they can it? always email me. Um, my email address. Can I give it or do yeah, you want to? Okay. So I can my, put it in the notes too, but go ahead and give it. Yeah. Um, my email is Tracy T R A C Y M as in Michael C A R S O N seven four at gmail.com. That's mine. And then Pierre Sherman, the uh, the other co-chairs, his is Cornell 
Hold on. I think his is <laughs> Cornel West for president. Mm. I'm just looking it up really yep. quick. And uh, yeah, you looked that up. I uh, uh, I think it's really uh, you know exciting. Um, you know the places that we are able to have uh, Cornell on the ballot. Um, but like I said, even here with you know all the signatures we're gathering, I think people are a little bit uh, exhausted from all that right now. So it, I, I'm gonna have to like uh, kind of get people regrouping here in Minnesota. Uh, we got to get reorganized and do a few things for the end of this campaign. Anyway, go ahead. Yep, so I found it. So I was exactly correct. It's uh -huh. Cornell West, the number four president at Outlook.com. Okay, nice. And that's for who again? Paris Sherman. Okay, all right. He won't um, mind giving out his address. Um, but one of us too, um, because again, we got we have one month. Um, and again, we live in a strange state. For <laughs> some reason, you would think. I, 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 <laughs> uh, it, it just befuddles me. Like, why can't you just say you want to run? Right. And your name is on the ballot. Like, right. why can't it be that simple? Right. There's not, there's really no reason. I mean, even if you wanted, you know, just some, you know, bar so that put somebody has to put in some effort. I mean, so that, you know, whatever, if there was something, it doesn't need to be anywhere near that number. <laughs> it should be a lot lower and really like 500 or even yeah, something. something. Yeah, even five hundred would be work, you know. A thousand. Effort, yeah. Okay, we can get a thousand signatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we should have to get any. <laughs> right. Again, I, I think I zero should be the number. You say you want to run, you get your name on the ballot. But mm -hmm. that'll confuse people. I'm going to be quiet. You did not put me on there and start going off about my state. Uh, that's funny. We went. We got a chance uh, to go to Red Wing, Minnesota today, which is known, I guess, for its pottery and its shoes or something. Uh, maybe not, but at least in Minnesota, it's known for that. And uh, went to a bookstore, Fair Trade Books, and those folks were supporters of uh, Cornell West. That was some of the people that I, you know, couldn't get out to all the time. And it's like an hour away, whatever. But I uh, got a couple books. Got this Chris Hedges book, uh, America: The Farewell Tour, and then I got uh, I also got an additional. They always give out a book to new uh, new people when they come there. But then I also got this book, Cornell West book, book, Hope on a Tightrope. Also comes with a CD, so I'm gonna have to check that out. Maybe we can play that if we have a little gathering or a little party or something. Um, now, I thought, I, you know, we talked about your uh, podcast, and I was wondering if we could just answer one of the type of questions that we uh, you answer you uh, do on your podcast. Uh, would that be cool? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I think one that I get a lot is, um, you know, it's kind of either like West as a spoiler, or some say like you want Trump or do you want Trump? Those are kind of very similar, but do you want to answer one of those, one of both of oh, those? Oh, I want to answer them? both. Okay, let's hear. Both. Yeah. The people who say I want Trump and you're not giving me, and trust <laughs> me, I don't want Trump. Let me put that, <laughs> right. let me put that out there. I am not voting for Donald Trump, period. You're not giving me a reason to vote for you. Right. I'm not Trump is not a reason for me to vote for you. That that's not a reason. I'm not Trump. So everybody should just go vote for me. I don't look like Donald Trump. I don't act like Donald Trump. My hair is not the same color as Donald Trump. There's nothing about me and Trump that is similar. That's your only policy. And for me, and people say, oh, you're just painting a broad spectrum. Kamala, or is it Kamala? Kamala Harris made right. it very clear that she's going to support Israel with whatever they need. Yep. I'm voting for you for what reason? Genocide is like the stopper for me. I'm yep. not going to vote, and I feel this within my heart. If if anybody votes for either one of those candidates, they're supporting genocide. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you say it. You're supporting genocide. You know they're doing it. And instead of demanding, hey, if you don't stop, we're not going to vote for you, which would be a better thing to do. You say, well, no, that, you know, they're over there and I'm over here. No, right. it's about me being my brother's keeper. So for me, it starts and stops at genocide. I cannot in good conscience support either one of those candidates in terms of the spoiler 
How can you spoil something that's already rotten? It's already terrible, so he's coming in to do what? And if Dr. West was such a nothing burger and his mm -hmm. campaign is in disarray, I wonder why the Democratic Party offered him a cabinet position in money. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know why that, to drop out. I don't know why they would do... I mean, his candidacy is nothing. That's what they're telling the MSNBCs and the and all these people. But sure. you're offering cabinet... Okay, that, that literally makes no sense to me. That means that what Dr. West is saying is a threat to you. That's right. And that you are scared. But that's just me. And of course, I hope I'm not abandoning people when I say, well, no, I really don't care that... I think if you vote for these people, you're voting for genocide because mm -hmm. it's just, it's just that simple for me. I agree with you. I was, you know, I don't even think I, I don't have anything to add to that. I think that, you know, that really covers it. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's really simple. You can put it in a really stark, uh, simple terms. And I think that's, uh, you know, clear cut terms uh, that, you know, I think it gets right to the heart of the issue. Let's say that way. No, um, not according to some people. Some yeah. people are like, you're closed minded. No, so I think you I mean, 200,000 people are dead because this administration refuses to utter just one sentence. Right. Since I mean, this, we're not giving you any more money unless right. you stop the killing. That's it. That's right. all you have to say. Right. That literally stops it. Well, they'll keep bombing, but that, that let them go to Germany. They won't even they won't even lie to us for a couple months. Is that, that they won't even lie to us for a no. couple months. They're not going to do it. They want to be able to send Israel money at any moment they could ask for it just send it right over there up uh, and I uh you know I really appreciate that and I would encourage people to go check out uh your podcast uh, you have a you have a couple podcasts or is it uh, I do I have yeah. two podcasts I have the Tracy show which I do Tuesdays and Thursdays and that's yep. my more broad range political shows where well no my Tuesday show is more politics based. And I just talk mm. about whatever. My Thursday show is kind of like my fun show because I don't believe in crying all the time. You gotta have some levity. <laughs> right, For right, example, right, right. I think I did my Thursday show on Saturday and yesterday I talked about um, three shows that I had a problem with growing up mm. as a child. Credible Hulk, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman. I'm like, I, I got problems with these shows. Then Tuesday I'm gonna do um, superheroes that I can beat up in a fight. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm not watching a debate. I, I mean, I'm not watching. A I know, right? Neither. I'm not going to sit there no. and watch two liars just sit there and just lie. Nope. Right, I'm right. Do my podcast on superheroes that I can beat in a fight. So I try to mix it up. But for the most part, most people know me through my congratulations to the 47th president of the United States growing up. That's where most people have subscribed to my show. That's where they're coming from. Well, I really appreciate your time. And like I said, I would really encourage everybody to check out your podcast. You know, is there anything else that you want to share uh, before you go about the West campaign or about your podcasts or anything um, else you're working on? I think for me, the again, because most people know me from my Saturday podcast, um, we talk about these issues all the time and how people, and I don't know how you feel about this, but someone was asking, well, how come third party candidates can't get traction? I said, it's the media. Mm -hmm. no, oh, well, that's true. an excuse. No, it isn't. If you think about it, <laughs> have you yeah. seen, like, I saw Dr. West on CNN like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And she said, they were talking about the story about Dr. West getting campaign, getting, um, getting an offer to drop out the campaign. Mm, for the sure. Period. And he, she says, well, are you going to drop out? Yeah. Dr. West literally said, I'm in this until November. She says, it sounds like you're undecided. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? He know, literally right? out of his own mouth just right? said, I'm in this until November. Right? She said, you're, <laughs> you're, out, you're undecided. I'm like, maybe it's just me. Maybe because I'm so stupid, I don't like get it. But I'm like, uh, wait a minute, he, it's, but he just, but did he? Yep. No, it's yeah. true. I mean, it's the, like you said, it's the systemic things. Just to even like get be on the ballot and be seen, even that way. That's like the most basic way. Somebody goes in there, 
they look at it, they're still undecided, which surprisingly is a lot of Americans, you know, and they say, okay, I'm going to vote for this person. But like before that, yeah, we don't even get any media. I mean, they were covering him a little bit way back, but like pretty much since we're getting close to the election. And of course they, you know, Harris is like the, they got Harris up on everything now. Like they've totally, you know, blacked out and boxed out all the third party candidates from like, you know, most of the important and primetime media. That's not, they're not in there and, anymore. And here's the thing that agitates me. It agitates me to the point of, I, I don't understand this. When they lose, it was Jill Stein. I don't know if these people <laughs> ever thought, hey, you might want to look in a mirror. Yeah, Have right. they ever asked themselves, why does somebody want to vote for Cornell West over Kamala Harris? Right. No, they'll never ask yeah. themselves that question. Because in a sense, they think that they're entitled. That's their vote. My vote belongs to Kamala Harris. I yeah. I can't vote any other right. way. Y right. Yes, I can. Because exactly. yes, I will. But it's like it's an entitlement. Yep. The two-party system is a system of people who think that they're entitled to a vote. They don't have to work for it. Listen to Kamala's, um, Kamala's, I keep switching names because yeah. I don't, I, right. essentially, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to uh, be one Just of use people. all of them, yeah. Hit them all. Yeah, I don't want to be one of those people that <laughs> get somebody's name wrong because right. I do think that's offensive. But look at what they're bragging on. They're bragging on they lowered the cost on 10 prescriptions. Yeah, right. Are you serious? <laughs> well, there are thousands of them. And second, they should be free. Agreed. I don't yep. know how hard that is. For, well, it won't be free because somebody's got to pay for it. No, we cut the military's funding. Yeah, right. Yep. I mean, I, yep. I personally believe in monetary, monetary theory. That's what mm. I believe. But everybody's not there. So I don't really talk about that, but I'm like, I know a good, I know a good place we could get that money mm, from. Yep. We could stop funding the military. We could close bases overseas. We have bases at places that we are not at war with. I agree. Like for what reason? I'm I agree. Like, it's like they're patting themselves on the back for doing nothing. And that's yep. what infuriates me. And the public is like, well, I watched on CNN. Oh, honey, that's your first problem. Yeah. Watching the wrong type of media. Yeah. That's yeah. American yeah. Empire for you. The patch pat themselves on the back for doing nothing. Pat that's like their whole thing. Like they accomplished <laughs> something. Like they did something. Yeah. Like, well, racism is wrong. Okay, yeah. what are you gonna do about it? Exactly. I mean, oh. that's the liberal way is to, you know is they say it's wrong and then they just do nothing about it. They say they're not going to they're not going to ignore the suffering in Palestine, but what are they doing? They're participating not only are they not ignoring it, they're participating in it. And giving more money. And giving more money to it. Supplying weapons to it. I think if America called themselves like if the working poor and the middle class called ourselves Israel, maybe then we get more money. Yeah, uh, right. Then maybe they'd give us some funding, right? Yep. It's it's terrible. It's just it's it's unbelievable that uh, people don't see that. To me, it's like, it's obvious, you know, where their priorities are and it isn't with uh, people and the planet and all those things, healthcare, that stuff. Okay. Nope. No, nope. that's not and, happening. Unless and you're and in Israel. Then you right. Now let me add this. If you vote for either one of those two candidates, you don't want universal healthcare. You don't want a living wage. You don't want um, free college. You want student loan debt to continue. All of those things are wrapped. Now, I use genocide as kind of like the right. um, point of morals because you would think people right. on Facebook have them, but apparently there's a whole bunch of warriors behind their keyboards. Right. Um, but you're not for any of those things. I well, even don't... like even like codifying Roe v. Wade, which they you know they claim they actually say out loud they want to do whatever. They've had the Democrats have had plenty of opportunities to do that kind of stuff, and they have not taken those opportunities. So four Democratic presidents, and not all of them had majorities. Even if they did it now, it would be a very poor showing, a very long process that should have been a lot shorter, <laughs> just to get you know the human rights. You know, right? And it's like, but I've said this on another podcast that isn't congratulations to Cornell West and <laughs> president. Um, they don't want to. Right. There's two things that I know. Republicans do not want to ban abortion nationwide. Right. And Democrats don't want to codify it. 
What they want to do is keep bringing this up so that they can keep getting fundraising. They want to keep sending those fundraising yep. letters out, which I don't know why people see it. Literally, Elizabeth Warren, who I do not have high opinion mm -hmm. about, she came up with one good idea. She's like, why not use that? This is after the decision. Right. Um, she said, why not use federal land or federal hospitals to perform abortions in? Right. Well, that kind of makes sense because every state has one. Yep. So, okay, it's federal land. Here's, oh, we're not considering that. What do you mean you're not considering? Yeah. You want, and you want me to keep voting for it. <laughs> you, they got to use at least use the tools that they actually have like, to do the stuff. Like, it's have. one thing. Okay, they can say, okay, they somebody stopped us from doing this way or that way, whatever. But, like, when you have, like, an option right there and you're just like, well, I'm not going to use it. It's like, it's pretty clear. Uh, you know, whose side you're on that you, you know, well, they're on big corporations. Exactly. Side. I mean, literally, this is the part that Joe Biden said during the midterms, after the midterm embarrassment by the Republicans, said, no, we're not going to codify it. We need 57 senators. No, you don't. You need yeah. 60. Right. 60 is the number you have. First, he's got to pass the House, which at that time is Republican control. So, yeah, it's not even making it out the House. Right. Then it's got to get to the Senate, and fifty-seven is not the number. Right. Like we let, I think the public thinks that they're educated, mm. but they really aren't. I don't like to say that, but they really are because I'm like, no, you're not seeing it. It's literally right there. I think it's more, it's more just like I mean, you know, like uh, people don't have a lot of confidence in our ability to. Uh, do some of these things. I mean, they've been, you know, they've been trained to lack, you know, lack that confidence in, uh, uh, you know, in their own politics and their own ideas, you know, always looking to somebody for, you know, the answers to these, uh, to these questions. And, you know, it seems like Harris is the new, uh, you know, is the new person that the ruling class is getting excited about to, uh, to use. Yeah. And, to, I, think, yeah. and I wonder how did that happen? Yeah, because right. when she was vice president, her popularity was like 28, 29%. Right. All of a sudden, Joe Biden says, I'm not, I'm not gonna run for the nomination, although you're not running for president, but you can be president. Make right. that make sense. I'm like, okay, right. that part already doesn't make sense. But somehow she goes from 29% all the way to the like, wait a minute, something. Yeah. This right. is something, it's not right. I don't know what it is, and I can't put my finger on it, but I'm going to put my finger on it before November mm -hmm. 5th. Something, I don't know what it is. But I'm like, but how? She's the same person. Well, we'll see. I mean, we don't know for sure until the elections come around. I mean, they were saying, you know, Hillary was going to win. Like, everywhere was saying, oh, Hillary's going to win, but she didn't win. So maybe they're really wrong. We won't know until the uh, election comes. And we see, I mean, like we said, there's millions of people out there that don't, you know, at least certainly when I was out there, most of the time it was Biden. But I mean, there's definitely still people out there that don't want Harris or Biden or Harris or Trump or Biden, for that matter. But um, a lot of people that are motivated around this ongoing genocide, which everybody can see is happening. And, you know, people are very concerned about it. Just there's, keep voting. there's millions of people that uh, feel really upset and they don't want to vote for either. But, you know, it's just a question of whether the Democrats will be able to shame how many of those people the Democrats will be able to shame into voting. Uh, for them, because that's what they use. They use, you know, the shame and guilt, like you said, making it sound like the, uh, your vote or my vote is uh, already owned by them and is not our own vote. So it's disgusting. It really is. Well, I really appreciate your time, Tracy. And thanks for speaking with me. Oh, so it's over. I mean, if you got if you got more to say, I don't. I don't. Oh, I got I got more to say. Oh, I don't no. want to go on for I'm too poor. long. <laughs> yeah, let's get um, it. <laughs> the. Uh... <laughs> I think one thing I don't know. Yeah, no. Um, well, if you have other guests, but I would love to sit down someday, and soon. Um. And talk about when is enough going to be enough? Right. Right. Um, like it's got to be a point where we just say, you know what? No, I, I can't no more. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that being said, I have created a Facebook group called We nice. Will Fight Back. Okay. And the point of We Will Fight Back 
is to organize a demonstration in Washington, D.C. on Inauguration Day. Okay. Because I don't have anything else to do with my life. Um, uh, but I can email you the information. Yeah, let's do it. We have a meeting tomorrow at 6. I don't know how many people will attend, but sure. at least to get the idea out there that we Absolutely. need to, no matter who the president is, Absolutely. We need to be saying we've had enough. And that that's that's pretty much all I have. I know. Watch my podcast. <laughs> subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna hold on. Well, so I got a. Uh... Will you tell me the Facebook group again? Because I wanna I wanna go to. We will fight back. Okay, we will. Um, yeah, I think we need to be uh, ready. Yeah, whoever's in the White House, we have to make it so that they have to actually, at the very least, think about our issues, have our issues right in front of their eyes, whether that, you know, you know, we got to keep pushing this stuff. We got to start making it impossible for them to, uh, to get their agenda accomplished, right? That means, uh, right. and that, even if it's Cornell West. Oh, that's true. Know, Absolutely. That's Agreed. why God is going to be like, probably not. Because uh, you know, I would keep it petty. I'd be calling up everybody. Hey, remember when you said? Right. See, that's my problem. I keep mine petty. But even if he's present, I'm like, hey, remember yep. you said you're gonna do this, this, no, and this. No, it's true. Now I'm it, holding your feet to the fire. It's true. We don't, you know, we don't like, you know, think that anybody is perfect or anybody is gonna just, you know, automatically do everything right. You know, not only do they need their feet held to the fire, they need people like you know, telling them the right way to get things accomplished. And, you know, they need to be actually engaging in democracy, you know, listening to the people and what is needed, you know, it's not just them offering you things from somewhere else. So I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we need to be there. And I think we should have like, maybe like a little round table or something like that after the election. Uh, some of us folks can come together and we can talk about, uh, you know, like you said, what we need to do, but also how we think the election turned out. Because again, just because the media says it's going to go one way, thing it could always surprise us in good or bad ways. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's just one snapshot of one moment. You know, you know, over a period of time when people go in and vote, uh, you know, that little clip of where they're at politically at that moment. Um, you know, whether they've been shamed or guilted. So yeah, like I said, join me Tuesday because I will not be watching the debate. I will not <laughs> watch it. I'll be talking about superheroes that I can beat up in a fight. That is what I'll be talking about because I can't with these two. Can't they're, it, both yep. terrible. they're both liars. They're both genocide deniers. That's I don't true. know. It's like literally same, nope. same coin, two different sides. So that's all I have to say. You got it. You hit the nail on the head there. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy. You have Thank a good you. night. You Bye. too. Bye. And that's our special interview. Thanks for listening. Solidarity. This has been a Socialist News and Views special interview.